Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and this past week has been filled with news about iPhone 12, upcoming events, iOS 14 beta 7, of course I'll talk about when iOS 14 beta 8, or maybe the final version will be out, and more in just a moment. Now the first thing is, we could see an event announcement as soon as tomorrow. Now there's some conflicting information on this from John Prosser and Mark Gurman. So John Prosser was saying earlier that an event could take place or be announced tomorrow, but we could be seeing an Apple Watch or iPads on the 8th. Now, according to Mark Gurman, we may not see any products, but rather just an announcement of when the virtual event will be for the iPhone 12 launch, along with a new Apple Watch and other products as well. And so, of course, we'll have to wait until tomorrow to see what they come out with. But on the 8th, it looks like we should at least expect some sort of announcement from Apple regarding maybe an event or product. So hopefully we see both. It's hard to say, but of course I'll keep you updated as soon as I know. Now also love to dream, which is a very reliable source has said there's no Apple watch this month either. And that coincides with Mark Gurman's statement saying that we won't see the, the actual products this month, but rather we'll actually see an event announcement and then a product launch next month. So that seems more likely. And at that event, we may finally see air tags. Now air tags would be a replacement or maybe an alternative to, for example, to tiles, which would help you locate different things. It could be a small tag that you could place in a backpack on a keychain or something like that. We've heard about this for years and we may finally see it at this particular event. Now, when it comes to the iPhone 12, it looks like we're going to have a couple different launch rollouts. So for example, the first launch may be the iPhone 12 and then maybe the smaller 5.4 inch iPhone 12. So maybe the replacement for this iPhone 11 along with the smaller iPhone 12. Now we don't know this hundred percent, but it's looking like more and more people are getting information saying this is how it's going to work. So DigiTimes along with Mark Gurman are saying that we're going to see a two stage iPhone launch. So again, two 6.1 iPhones or according to Mark Gurman, a 6.1 and 5.4 to begin with. And then we'll see the higher end launch a little bit later. So then we'll see maybe the iPhone 12 pro and the 12 pro max launch alongside each other, maybe later in October or maybe even November, depending on what Apple decides to do. So it seems like that's more likely with the 6.1 inch and 6.7 inch iPhone 12 pro and 12 pro max. So, We'll see them either way, but it looks like a staggered rollout like they did with the iPhone 10 and eight plus. Now also on the high end, the 6.7 inch, that's what this size would be or represents. These are just prototype units so you can use them to make cases, but they should be squared off like this. But on the higher end, 6.7 inch iPhone 12 pro max, apparently it may be the only device to get 5g millimeter wave. Now we should see sub six, which makes more sense because it's more widely rolled out, but those getting millimeter wave require more power. It's more limited to certain cities. For example, where I live near the Charlotte area, we have it, but it's only on a couple street corners in a couple areas within the city. Otherwise you don't get millimeter wave at all. So you do get sub six, thanks to companies like T-Mobile and others which is much more widely available and makes sense and probably uses less power than millimeter wave, which is much more of a shorter distance sort of protocol. But either way, it makes sense to put that in the larger phone and until it's widely rolled out across the world, maybe launch it full scale next year or something along those lines. Now there's an interesting leak saying that all iPhones this year will be the same thinness or 7.4 millimeters thin. This is thanks to everything Apple Pro and Max Weinbeck saying that all iPhones could have the exact same thickness. So maybe they will, maybe they won't. Although that would be pretty interesting to see the same thickness, meaning that the larger phones obviously would just be scaled up versions and then they would all feel similarly the same in the hand other than their overall size. So that could be something interesting and different. Also this year, like I mentioned before, we should expect a new blue color to replace the midnight green. We've been hearing this over and over and over from different sources. So it seems like instead of just having midnight green, we would have possibly white space gray, or maybe they'll call it silver along with gold and midnight green. So it just depends on what Apple decides to do, but hopefully we do get that blue color. I actually would prefer that to midnight green, but I know some people would like them to make all sorts of colors, including a product red variant, which I would love to see. Now, Mr. White has shared a photo of what he says is the back of an iPhone 12, the back glass, although this appears to be a little bit Photoshopped, 
but it basically gives the layout that you see here with a LiDAR sensor underneath, similar to that of the iPad Pro. And that seems to make sense. Some people were showing sort of a quad layout for these cameras, and it looks like the finalized version is going to have a small hole here for the LiDAR sensor and look basically the same. Of course, we won't know this for sure until Apple actually shows it off, but it looks like this is fairly finalized, at least the way it's going to be laid out. Now, the crazy thing is we're starting to see reports of the next year's iPhone, the iPhone 13 or 12S or whatever they'll call it. And it seems like that version is going to have 8K video recording according to Comia on Twitter. So that makes sense. Samsung has been implementing that in their S20 and Note 20 Ultra line. And so Apple could come out with an 8K video recording option. As long as it's good, that makes sense. But otherwise, it seems a little bit unnecessary at this point. But either way, it would be nice to have. And also, Digitimes is reporting that within the camera, to make things faster for streaming and just less latency overall, Apple in the future will adopt circuit boards that use liquid crystal polymers for faster image transmission from the image of the camera through the CPU and everything else so that it will stream faster. So that would be interesting. Of course, Apple would want to make things faster and faster. So it will be interesting to see what the future tech holds. But right now it's a bit early to see exactly what Apple's going to be putting in future iPhones. But we'll know again sometime next year. Now we're currently on a weekly release schedule for iOS 14. This happens as it gets closer and closer to the final release. And it seems like we should have iOS 14 beta eight this week. Last week on Thursday, we had iOS 14 beta seven release, and then we should see iOS 14 beta eight release as soon as tomorrow, or I guess they could push it off until Thursday. Things got a little bit changed up with iOS 13.7's release. However, some people are telling me that we may not get iOS 14 beta eight and instead get iOS 14 GM or golden master, which means that would be the finalized version released to the public, just released to developers earlier. So developers would get it about a week early and then it would release to the public. It seems a bit early for that, but there are other people saying that iOS 14.1 may be coming out with iOS with the iPhone 12s and they would have that updated version for that. So they would release iOS 14 earlier to everyone else and iOS 14.1 when the iPhone 12s come out. It's possible they'll do that, but it seems a little bit unlikely. But again, Apple has been changing things up more and more lately, so it's possible we'll see that. But it seems like we should at least get a beta eight based on what we've had in the past. iOS 12 had 12 betas, iOS 13 had eight betas. And so it's possible we have seven. I would be surprised if it was a GM. So what I'm thinking is iOS 14 beta eight this week, iOS 14 GM the following week with a final release on the week of the 20th. That makes more sense to me. I don't have a hundred percent confirmation of that, but that's what seems likely to me. And so that's what I'm going to say will happen again. We could see this change now, some good news that has been confirmed for those that use Apple watch and have the ECG version of the Apple watch. If you're in Japan, you may be getting ECG very soon as it's been approved by Japan's medical authorities. So unlike other things that Apple does, many of the medical things or medical sort of measurements that the Apple watch can do have to be approved by the local government in order to implement them into the watch. So it looks like they're going to be doing that in Japan very soon. So look for an update for that so that you can use ECG in Japan and maybe some other countries as well. So hopefully we'll see that very soon. Now at an upcoming event, expect a series six Apple watch. Of course, we've been expecting this for a while and it looks like it definitely is going to have an O2 sensor or pulse oximetry sensor built into the back sensor. Don't expect this to roll out to current Apple watches as it will need a new sensor apparently to do that, but it will give you your O2 saturation levels. And then also supposedly it will have faster Wi-Fi along with increased performance, which we would expect with a new system on a chip, just like they do regularly. Now, apparently we won't have the force press where you can press and hold. Now press and hold works, but it's not actually pressure sensitive anymore. So we've seen that go away with iPhones, with iPhone 11 and probably iPhone 12. So unfortunately they're doing the same to the watch, maybe to make it simpler to manufacture but it seems like it should be coming very soon. Now, other than an upcoming series six Apple watch, apparently Apple's working on a lower price Apple watch to replace the series three. Maybe they'll call it watch SE or Apple watch SE, or maybe they have a new name for it, but apparently they're going to have a less expensive option. And then maybe it will do some of the same functions, but maybe not just have the cellular built in and a few other sensors. So expect something a little bit different, I think coming up. Now a new iPad air is just around the corner. So we should have a fourth generation iPad air. 
that will look very similar to this 2020 iPad Pro. So Apple will be squaring off all the edges for upcoming versions, and it should look just like this. So we should see it along with Face ID in upcoming iPads. So I think we'll see that. And then also, apparently, according to Kamiya, Apple's working on a Magic Keyboard 2, similar to this Magic Keyboard 1, but with the exception that they're finally going to add an escape key as well as function keys, which would be great. It's really missed as far as brightness and volume. It would be easier to do it from the keyboard and also a force press trackpad with haptic feedback. It would be great to see Apple update the Magic Keyboard like that. This keyboard is great. I think that would be 10 times better. So I would love to see them do that. So hopefully we'll see that pretty soon. Now, also, Apple is still working on their Silicon Macs, and we should expect one as soon as a couple months from now. In fact, the first one may be a 12-inch variant that would have Apple Silicon in it and then come out by the end of the year with an all-new chipset, a new GPU, and give up to 20 hours of battery life. However, there are conflicting reports that say it may have this butterfly keyboard from the 2016 MacBook Pro. Hopefully it doesn't. If they do bring it out, hopefully it will be reliable. And this one has actually been reliable for me on the 2016, but people have had a lot of problems, have lost confidence in it, and I'm not sure that many people would welcome it back. Some people really like it, but there's more people that seem to not like it than that actually do. And so reliability, I think, as long as they've got that down, it would be fine, but they really need to make sure it's very solid. But either way, I look forward to an upcoming MacBook, and I can't wait to see what Apple's got with Apple Silicon and their hardware. Now there's information saying that the upcoming AirPod 3 will look very similar to AirPods Pro, just maybe not feature noise cancellation, but have the in-ear style, maybe a shorter stem, and we should see that probably early 2021 it looks like. However, by the end of this year, we could see over-the-ear AirPods. I would love to see those, AirPod Studio, some people have called them, and they'll have touch controls similar to that of the AirPods Pro, or at least they'll be motion sensitive like the AirPods are. So we should see something like that. And then also they'll have a redesigned ear cup that goes over your ear. And I look really forward to that. Also, Apple's supposedly going to release a smaller HomePod for later this year. So we could see an updated HomePod. And then also many people are looking forward to a new Apple TV. And we should see that as well, although that may not be until 2021. It seems like they keep delaying it. I would love to see an updated Apple TV. I think it's far past the time we expected it. But the remote may have a Find My option with a little speaker in it. So that would be ideal. I think that would be a great option. I actually like the Apple TV remote. But for those that don't, at least you'll have Find My. Maybe they'll redesign it. Maybe they won't, but it's hard to say. And so that's all the information this week. Again, look for an update in a few days or so. Of course, I'll keep you updated if there's an iOS update. And as we know more, I'll keep you informed as well. Be sure to follow me on Twitter. I also have Telegram and Discord as well, where I'm also chatting with a lot of people. So be sure to check us out there. And then also... If you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, of course, I'll link it in the description like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already, though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.